You want to know what the best part about a brand new build is? A fresh fetching copy of Windows. What is going on everybody? Welcome to this week's tech tip. Today we're going to be showing you how to install Windows 10 via a USB drive. This video is perfect for those that need a step-by-step -step guide on how to install Windows either on a brand new build or if you've already got a rig and you just want to do a clean slate and start from scratch, this video will be perfect for you as well. In any case, let's begin. Now before we get started, there are a few things that you're going to need before proceeding. First and foremost is you're going to want to have a form to verify an active your new Windows 10 installation. So for those that are just buying a brand new copy of Windows 10 or at least a digital key, there is a chance that they may have sent you an actual USB device that has the installation media already on it. If that is the case, feel free to skip the part where we create that installation media using our own USB uh, device. Now, if you already have a digital license or you already have an activated copy of Windows, you're either going to need to be A, have that digital license handy, or B, you're going to want to sign into that Microsoft account on the new rig after we do the installation and it should move your license or your activation over to the new instance of Windows. If you've done neither one of those and you are starting from on a fresh hard drive or a fresh solid state drive, you're going to want to have some form of digital card or your, your actual key in order to activate the Windows once we're done. Now the second thing that you're going to need is a method to get that installation media assuming that they didn't actually send you a USB device. So for those that are starting from scratch on a current build, you'll probably want to build you this installation or this bootable USB drive before you wipe Windows in order to get that media. Now, if you don't have an installation on a current rig and this is a brand new rig and you're starting fresh for the first time, you're probably gonna want to find another computer, something that you can download the Windows creation tool and actually create this bootable USB drive. The third thing that we're gonna want today is a 16 gigabyte USB flash drive, assuming you don't already have the Windows 10 installation media that they may have sent you. This is for those that don't have that and are going to need to be creating one from scratch. So I usually choose a 16 gigabytes. Microsoft does recommend an eight gigabyte. So if an eight gigabyte is all you've got, that should work perfectly fine. But I like to use 16 just to give me that extra leeway as far as space is concerned. And finally, the last thing that you're gonna need is of course an internet connection because after you do the installation, it's gonna need to be able to download some drivers for any types of the devices that you have. Windows 10 by now is actually pretty good about finding and updating to the recommended drivers or the newest drivers for your particular hardware, which is why you'll need an internet connection. The other reason is if you don't, again, have that USB drive already sent to you, you're going to need to download the Windows Media Creation Tool, and we're going to download and prepare a flash drive or a bootable USB drive, but we're going to actually need to download those setup files first and beforehand. So you are going to need an internet connection, and of course, depending on the speed of your internet connection, is going to determine how long that download and that preparation is going to take. The first step that we're going to be starting with today is going online and downloading the Windows Media Creation Tool. We're going to do this because it's going to give us a couple different methods that you guys can use to actually download and create a bootable USB drive. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and go to this URL and you're going to want to click on download tool now. Again, as I was saying, if you have already purchased Windows and they sent you a USB flash drive, that is going to have your installation media already on it and you can actually proceed to the steps where we go ahead and start the installation process. This part is just going through and preparing a USB drive to be able to get that bootable USB. Once the creation tool has been downloaded, you're gonna to want to go over here on the left-hand side if you're using Chrome or go into your downloads folder and run the media creation tool.exe. And then it's gonna come up with the wizard that says getting a few things ready. Once it has finished getting everything ready, you will want to go down and accept the user terms and license terms. Go ahead and click on accept right here and it's gonna go back to getting a few things ready for the next step. Once it has finished things ready for the second time, it's gonna ask, what do you want to do? We are gonna to want to select the Create Installation Media USB Drive DVD ISO for another PC. So you're gonna to want to click on the bottom radio dial because we are not performing an upgrade, we are starting from scratch or for the first time. So you're gonna to want to select the bottom, bottom one here and then you're gonna go ahead and click on next one more time. This next part is gonna ask you to select your language, your architecture and your edition. You're typically gonna to want to leave these by default, but for those, go ahead and leave the use the recommended options for this PC checked and then go ahead and click on next. Now it's gonna ask us to choose which media to use. If you wanna install Windows 10 on another partition, you need to create and then run the media to install it. So because we are going 
going to be installing this on a USB flash drive, you will again need at least eight gigs, preferably 16, just to give you some extra leeway. So you're gonna want to select the top option. Now there are options where you can choose to download or create an ISO file, and then you can use a software called Rufus to install it. So for this demonstration, we are going to be using flash drive. So we've got the top radio dial selected. And again, we're gonna left click on next. Now it says select a USB flash drive. It's going to bring you to a tree and show you which removable uh, drives are installed on your computer. Now is a good time to go ahead and plug in the USB flash drive that you're going to be using. Now, keep in mind, you will want to back up any data that is on this drive if it's important to you as performing this option right here is going to completely format and wipe out the data that's already on the flash drive and overwrite it with the installation files. Once you've plugged in the flash drive and you're ready to install those media files on it, you may need to come up here and click on refresh drive list. And you can see the Kingston USB drive that I'm going to be using today is now showing up in the list and I have it selected here. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Once again, it is going to get a few things ready. Now this particular USB drive is a USB 2.0 drive. So I'm expecting the performance of it to be slightly slower and it's got a progression percentage. And this is going to be dependent on your internet connection and how fast you can download the Windows 10 files. Now this part may be a little bit tricky, especially if you are new to computers. What we're going to need to do is when you first turn on a computer, most motherboards now have what they call a boot menu that you can select a storage drive that it detects and actually boot from that drive. We're gonna want to do that in order to boot from the USB drive. So to do that, we do have an ASRock board in this build and typically, your most common boot menu is either gonna be F11 or F12 to get that boot menu to pop up. If you are using an older board and you're not sure if it has a boot menu, you can go into the BIOS, typically by hitting either F2 or the delete key after you first turn it on and you're gonna boot it into BIOS and then you're gonna to want to navigate to a section that either says boot or hard drives or priorities and find where you're going to need to move the USB drive up in priority so you can read and boot from it first. This is a good idea to to have your manual on hand as in that manual it may actually tell you which is your boot menu or how to get into BIOS or how to move things around. Now the next tricky thing that you might run into is the option to either choose legacy or UEFI when it comes to choosing your boot or your drive priority. So what you're going to want to do in today's demonstration we are going to be choosing UEFI as it is the new or most advanced version to boot from the drive. If you want to know the main differences in depth between the two you can go ahead and check out this video I'll post either down here or up in the top right hand card and that'll go through a in-depth tutorial on what the difference is in between the two. For just the sake of this video, go ahead and choose UEFI. Once you have selected the drive or you've rebooted the machine, it's going to ask you to press any key to enter the actual setup of the installation media that you just created. Now, so now that we've got the window set up right here in front of us, you're gonna of course want to modify these to match the settings that you want. For this video, we're gonna go ahead and leave them on English, English, and then United States, and we're gonna go ahead and left click on next. From here, it's then just gonna give us this window. You can left click on install now, and it's gonna give us a message saying that the setup is starting. Now, the next part is it's gonna ask us to activate the windows. If you have your digital key, feel free to go ahead and type that in right here if you would like. Otherwise, for this video, we can go ahead and skip this and we'll activate the windows later. So for now, we're just gonna go ahead and click, I don't have a product key, and it's then gonna to proceed to the next step. From here, it's gonna ask you to choose the type of install that you want to do, and you will want to verify with your digital code to make sure that you're selecting the proper Windows 10 version that matches with your key. So if you had Windows 10 installed previously, if it was Windows Home or Windows Education or Windows 10 Pro, you're going to want to select the same thing typically as keys will only work for a certain version. So in this case, I do have keys for a Windows 10 Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click on Windows 10 Pro, and then I'm gonna go ahead and left click on next. From here, it's gonna bring us to the applicable notices and license terms. Of course, you are gonna want to click, I accept the license terms and left click once again on next. And because we are doing a fresh install and not an upgrade in this video, we're gonna be choosing the custom install windows only as we are not performing an upgrade. So we are going to choose custom. Now from here, as you can see, there are multiple partitions. If you have a brand new drive, you may only have one that says unallocated space. That's perfect. If you do have multiple drives, you're gonna want to determine which one you're gonna be installing the operating system on. So here's a good 
rule of thumb that I've used from experience I've unplugged any type of external drives anything that I don't need plugged in at this time just to make this list a little bit cleaner because there was one time where I actually overwrote a bunch of family photos because I didn't choose the correct drive so I typically unplug anything aside from the USB that I'm using to install the windows and the drive that I'm going to be installing windows to. Now there are instances in this case where you can see right here where we have had windows already installed and it's broken up the drive into different partitions and you can usually designate which partitions belong to what drive indicated by the drive number. You can see that all of these partitions are assigned to drive zero you might have some on drive zero, you may have some on drive one or two, just depending on how many drives you have on your machine. So what I'm gonna do is because I don't want anything on this drive, this is the only drive that I want plugged in and that I want currently working with, I'm gonna actually click on one and then choose delete and then click okay. There's nothing else that I need to save on this thing, so doing this is perfectly fine. Of course, if you have data on a different drive, be very careful doing this because it is unrecoverable. Make sure that either you have your drives unplugged so you don't risk this, or you know what you're doing when it comes to deleting partitions. So I'm gonna delete partition one and I'm gonna delete drive zero partition one or in this case it was two, so we're gonna hit okay. And that's gonna leave us with 75 gigs of drive zero unallocated space. Again, that's if you've already had installs on this particular drive. If you have a brand new drive, you're probably already going to see drive zero, unallocated space, and then X for whatever type of free space you have. From here, we're just gonna go ahead and click on next as it's gonna create the new partitions as it needs to. So left click on next. Once you've clicked on next, the wizard is now gonna go through the process of installing the Windows media files as well as updates features, etc. If you're using a USB 3.0 flash drive and installing this on a solid state drive, this process will probably take you around 10, 15 minutes at most. However, it will ultimately depend on the system specs or the hardware specs of your current rig. Once the computer has finished installing the files, it is then going to reboot. Quick pro tip, if you are stuck in a boot loop where it wants to shut down and then restarts into the setup process, shut the computer down one more time and remove the USB flash drive that has your installation media on it so it can no longer read from that. It can actually read from the drive that you've installed the Windows media files on. Once the computer comes back up, it's gonna bring you to this screen where it's gonna say getting ready. Once the installation has finished the getting devices or the setting everything up, it's gonna bring you to this point where it's gonna ask you that to choose your region. For today's demonstration, of course, we're just gonna choose the United States, but you will want to select your region. And then we're gonna go ahead and left click on yes. From here, it's gonna, it's gonna say just a moment one more time, and then it's gonna ask you for your correct keyboard layout. Again, for today's demo, we're gonna choose US, but you'll want to choose what fits for you, and then click on yes. And then you can add a secondary keyboard layout if you want by clicking on add a layout, but for today's demo, we are just gonna click on uh, skip here. The next process is gonna go through the network connection just to verify that you are connected to the internet, and if you do have a wireless card in the computer, it's gonna ask you to connect to your Wi-Fi. Since I am hardwired on this machine, it wouldn't head and found the connection and then it proceeded to go to the account setup. Now, here's the next thing that you're gonna to want to do. If this is a personal use computer, you're of course gonna to wanna to set up for personal use. Otherwise, you're gonna set up for an organization and typically at that point, there's an IT department that will take care of it. So for here, we're gonna go ahead and click on set up for personal use and then click on next. And then it's gonna ask you to sign in with your Microsoft account. Now, here's the option. If you are installing just a fresh copy and you've had Windows installed on your rig before, you're gonna to want to use the same Microsoft account that you had on that old machine in order to move over the digital license. However, I don't typically sign into my rigs with a Microsoft account. I use a local account. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna choose offline account down here. From here, it's just gonna say sign in to enjoy full range, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go ahead and continue by clicking on limited experience. And this is going to allow me to create a local account that does not use a Microsoft account. Now, the downside of this, of course, is that requires me to manually put in my digital key in order to add activate Windows, which is what you can do if you do have your digital key, or if you want to, like I was saying before, you can use a Microsoft account to do that stuff automatically for you. It's completely up to you. So for this, I'm just gonna do YouTube demo, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave no password on this just because it's through a virtual machine, but you're gonna want to fill in a password and it's typically going to ask you to set up some security questions as well. Once you've got that process set up, go ahead and left click on next. And once again, it's gonna say just a moment and ask if you do more cross devices with activity, activity history. I'm gonna go ahead and click no. I don't need them to have all of this telemetry data. And of course, I'm gonna decline digital assistant as well. Those 
are completely up to you. Same with the privacy settings on your device. Online speech recognition, location, diagnostics, these are all up to your user preference. And again, for me, I'm just gonna go through and disable all these because I don't think they need any of this information. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose all of those to know, and then I'm gonna left click on accept. Once again, it's gonna go to the just a moment and it's gonna finalize everything and it's gonna tell you hi on the screen and it's gonna start the process to take you into your desktop. Now, depending on the hardware of your computer, this could take a little while, it could take several minutes, it could take 10, 15 minutes, it really just depends on the hardware specs of the actual computer. Once the Windows has fully booted and you're now on your desktop, in the background you may get some activity as it's gonna go through and it's gonna to start to find and install the most up-to-date drivers for the hardware that's in your computer. Now, if you do have third-party stuff such as different graphics cards or different audio cards, it may be best to go online and actually search for those drivers and make sure that you have the most up-to-date driver as Windows updates may not have actually found the proper driver for that actual component. Now, for the last step in today's demonstration is going through and manually activating your copy of Windows. So currently, we're on the desktop and we're gonna want to come down to these type, the either the start menu or you can type here to search and you're just going to start typing the word activation. This should come up right here where it says activation settings, system settings, go ahead and left click on it. It's then going to open up a settings window in the background and it's going to load the activation settings. Now from here, as you can see, because we didn't sign in with a Microsoft account, nor did we type in an activation code during the setup, it says Windows reported that no product key was found on your device, error code, blah, blah, blah. So what you're going to want to do is come on down and click on change product key. From here, you're going to want to go ahead and type in your product key, click on next, and then the next window is going to say activate. Go ahead and click on activate and it will go through the process to activate the windows. If you did sign in with a Microsoft account, chances are that you're good to go and you've already activated your copy of windows. And then of course, if you've typed in the product key during the setup, your key is already activated as well. However, they are all going to go through the authentication process and just verify that the key is compatible with your version of windows. If you've typed in your key, you click next and it won't activate, there's a chance that that particular key is not usable with your current version of Windows and you may want to do some research and find out what version of Windows you can use with that key. Now, if you've reached this part of the video, chances are you have successfully installed Windows 10 on your new machine, so congratulations, the hard part is over. Now, I know this tech tip was a little bit longer than normal, so I appreciate you guys sticking through it. If you do have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out in the comments and I will answer those questions the best that I can. And that is a wrap for this week's tech tip, bringing us into our question of the day. If you could only have one operating system for the rest of your life, what would it be? Leave your answers in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it on your social media platform of choice. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and enable the bell so you guys don't miss out on any type of future content and we will see you on the next one.